Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today's an interesting one. It's an oldie but a goodie. This one came in from Kevin. And actually, I'm going to use this one to take what I'll call the Cons Challenge. So Cons is a viewer of ours who's just espousing the, uh, the wonderfulness of a, uh, a toothbrush, an electric toothbrush, and Flitz Polish. So we'll see uh, how this does in cleaning it up. He's had some remarkable results. And uh, this one came from Kevin, also out by Cons in uh, the Arizona area. And uh, Kevin sent this in. It's a Ocean City True Temper 6051. So whenever you see True Temper on a fishing reel, it means it was after True Temper acquired Ocean City, which it did in 1957. So somewhere after 1957, this, uh, this reel came along. I remember this reel well. Uh, not from working on it, but just the design of it. And I, one of the things you're going to like here is the way that this drag comes off. But what we're going to do right now is we're going to strip the reel down. You can tell it's missing two posts. And thank goodness for Ocean City. They, uh, just like Penn, they weren't one to uh, develop different pieces of parts for every reel. This actually comes off of a Bay City reel, a 112. But guess what? It's going to fit. So, uh... Kevin, you're in luck there. We've got a couple of cross posts we'll try and clean up as well. And in the meantime, let's uh, let's kind of show you what this reel is about. So I'm going to start by taking this off. While I do, I'm going to thank our first responders, essential personnel, law enforcement, and anybody working to keep us safe during this pandemic. EMT, healthcare workers, um, folks that do the... Um, sorry, I'm struggling with this a little bit. The uh, healthcare and... Uh, Nurses, doctors, aides, and everybody else that's involved in this. Thank you for all it is that you do. This one's got a little, uh, you're supposed to be able to lift up on this. I'm not having a lot of luck with that at the moment. Let's try backing this off. I don't, that's not going to do anything, but uh, you should be able to lift this off because it's got a fork. There we go. It's not a lift off, it's a pull down. And you use that for your key to, uh, to take it off. So Ocean City was fun that way. It always enabled you to not have to search for a wrench and uh, made it a lot easier for a lot of folks. So I like the design of this reel. I've, I've worked on reels similar to this one. I think you'll enjoy it as well. All right, so now the big old star just to get off. And then this whole section, if I recall, should just pull right out. Well, we may have to fish them out, but the drag stack is external to the reel and uh, makes it easy for servicing. All right, let's take the rest of the reel off. We don't need to, to fight that war right now. As you'll notice a couple of things, I'm wearing a protective glove, and that glove enables me to keep a lot of the debris and grime and the like off my hands, and I'll do that every day of the week uh, because it's... Uh, so much more comfortable than worrying about these things. All right, looks like we got a frozen screw. So what we'll do there is we'll do what we normally do. We're going to hit it with some WD-40 from both sides. Kind of let it do its work. We're going to come back to that. We're going to see which ones we can get off before we go much further. And here's a little trick that uh, I've shared before. This one's stuck too. I mean, probably should just hose them all down at the moment. Just go for a cup of coffee or at least work on the other side of the reel, maybe. But a trick that I've used before is if you get a stuck reel, we can come back to this first one. It's probably a little premature, but grab a scrubby or a piece of steel wool or something else. Wrap it around the bar so that you don't scar it. Use, in this case, I'm using channel lock pliers, but use something to grip it. But Again, you want to protect it so that you don't rip up the chrome plating. And then you can stop the spin of the bar and you can remove the screw, which is what we're doing here. And this was a success. We didn't break that screw off. And now we can go back and see if we can get them out of the real seat here. This one was already loose. Which makes me wonder if that one belongs in the other side. Nope, I guess it belongs on this side. Let's see if we go two for two. We do. Be 
These screws seem awful short, but I guess they're holding. Yeah, they're coming through. All right. Oh, we're three for three on the short screws. And these are like pattern. The short screws uh, go into the um, real slit. The longer screws go into the crossbars. And that would not, uh, not be too unusual. One of the things you need to recall is that the fellow who's, who started Penn Reels worked for Ocean City before he went over and founded his own one. And the reason for that, believe it or not, is Ocean City was not, a, not an everyday person's reel. They were pretty expensive. And um, Otto Hens, who uh, created Penn Reels, who was working there, was an immigrant, I believe he was Australian. Austrian, if I said that wrong, I apologize. But he was an immigrant and he wanted to design a reel for the masses at a, at a popular price point. And that's what he did. And that's how Penn Reels was formed. And during the Depression, interestingly enough, and uh, it's been successful to this day. Ocean City, as we mentioned, was acquired by um, True Temper in uh, 1957. It was a family-run business before that. Uh, actually, it was started by co-owners of a um, sporting goods store, and then I guess by marriage they became interrelated, but uh, I believe they each married uh, sisters, and, um, and they uh, started producing the product uh, over time. All right, so the all of the side plate screws are out. We can remove that. And this is typical of an Ocean City real design. It's simply bigger pieces. And uh, you can tell that it hasn't been serviced in quite some time. There's quite a bit of uh, rust on the steel parts here. We'll clean all of that up. And uh, we'll get ready to take the cleanup challenge from Cons by pulling out the uh, electric uh, toothbrush. We'll grab these parts and uh, we'll be back after, uh, after some cleaning. I'll show you some basics. Right now those are stuck and I don't know if we want to wrestle them. We don't have to wrestle this side. We may simply attempt to clean them on the reel. That's one of the dangers that you have when you're working on a 50 year old reel. If, uh, if something feels like it's going to go on you, then oftentimes the best thing to do is just leave it in place if it's not essential for the service. Of course we can do exactly what we did on the other side. We'll spray that down with some penetrating oil. Doesn't matter whose penetrating oil you use. Just happens that this go round. I'm using uh, WD-40, but I use all manufacturers' uh, makes, whether it's Liquid Wrench or the local hardware store brand or whatever. To me, it really doesn't make that much of a difference as long as uh, it gets the job done. So here's your four bridge screws that I took out, and I did want to make sure that they're all the same length they are. And again, these things have been sitting a while, so it doesn't hurt to just coat them with the penetrating oil as well. We should be able now to push that whole bridge plate through. Well, we can't because we're bumping into the um, spool. So let's go take the spool off. There's a, a E-clip up here. Might be hard to see on your video, and I'll apologize for that. I use a little uh, pick. I hold one side of the E-clip. Be careful with this. It's 50 years old. You lose this clip, you're going to have some troubles. I don't know if you can see it yet. There it is. That's the E clip because it looks like the letter E. That's uh, what we're going for. And that's why my parts tray works so well. Because when I go for the uh, pieces and parts to reinstall, I know where they are. All right, once you remove that, you can simply pull up. And then you have to slide it up. There's two slots in this assembly here that's going to hold that. So that'll go in. Now we can remove the yoke. The yoke has uh, an independent spool gear and it has a carrier in there. And that carrier looks a little fragile, but it's uh, it's okay, it just needs to be cleaned. I'm going to get a head start on that because it's just got a lot of dirt on it. We're going to do the same thing here. And then there's two springs. You want to get those off before they get lost somewhere. Those can go into the tray. And now the whole piece should just come right out, just like that. And now, for whatever reason, we're still stuck here, and we're going to have to work on that. But this whole assembly should pull right off here. 
it's not it's kind of frozen and uh, I'm going to do the same thing I just did with the rest of this I'm just going to be patient about it Let's see if I can tap some of those drag washers out and uh, we're just going to hose this down it's all got to get kind of fixed up anyway these might be all metal drag washers too I some of the Ocean City early ones were all metal, just like a, uh, a Mitchell reel. Mitchell, like a 302. Oh, nope, we got some cork washers in there. Good. All right, I'm just going to spray this and set this aside as well. We'll come back to that. And uh, I, I wouldn't worry terribly about getting that piece off. So let's just uh, do one more thing here. And then I'm going to go set up the uh, cleaning experiment for you. Just going to put all that in here just to see if we can't free those screws. Again, a broken screw is probably about the worst thing that can happen at the moment. So if I can't get those off the side plates here, I don't worry too much because those are already in place. I do worry if I couldn't get them off the gear side plate because the gear side plate is what needs to be serviced. All right, I'm going to pause that. When we come back, I'll have a, a little cleanup uh, campaign. And I'm actually going to start by doing an ultrasonic on this before I go to the, uh, the cleaner. So we're going to take all of this stuff, put it into an ultrasonic bath, kind of a hybrid of what Khan's challenged me to. And then when I come back, we'll, uh, we'll show you how to work that, uh, that cleaning process. Okay, so this table looks a little bit different than when I left it. So let's explain what I did short term. So one of them was I went and I took the spool, which has got a lot of heavy uh, salt accumulation and corrosion on it, and I put it in the ultrasonic bath to loosen some of that up. The next thing I'm going to do with that is going to take a utility knife and scrape the residual off. And I just used the flat blade as a scra scraper. I'm not trying to scratch or anything, although this is quite blistered and, uh, and the like. And then I'm just going to call that preparation for that uh, the trial of this split uh, stuff. So we'll do that on both sides. And of course, that's one side is always heavier than the other. It just uh, I'm not sure why that is, but it just seems like in every reel that I have where I have corrosion on the spool, one side is heavier than the other. And you can see we've got chrome pieces and metal flaking and all kinds of stuff coming off here from the corrosion. But we'll see how pretty we can make it. All right, that's probably enough of that. I'm going to clean that off of my table here. Let's explain the other pieces that happened while I was away. So I decided I was just going to uh, remove the pieces. I started with the pinion gear sleeve. And uh, it's got a main gear on. It's got rust. I remember I said that, uh, that the one piece should have just pulled off while it was rusted in. So I had a WD-40 it. Once I WD-40, then it just separated pretty easily. We got rust under there, so we're going to want to clean that. The back had a broken washer on it. Uh, we'll show you how to fabricate one uh, using a milk bottle, but uh, that's a, or a coffee can or whatever I can find. But we'll do that as a substitute because you won't find that washer, and it needs to be a hard washer. The inside of the cup is pretty good. We have three cork drag washers that came out of that sleeve. They're fine. We have the traditional setup where we will have a washer, a round washer, an eared washer, a round washer, and a cap washer. So all of that stuff is good. I'm going to just take that and put that off to the side for a moment. We have the handle nut. We have a bridge. We have the anti-reverse dog. We'll show you how this works. But it came off like that. And there's a screw that goes, uh, there's a spring that connects the dog with a little post on the back here that's sitting in my porch tray. But we're going to leave this out for cleaning. And uh, we got a couple of posts here. One post was pretty much deciding to stay. And I'm not going to uh, try and do anything with that beyond clean it on the, the shaft itself. And the same thing below here. We were having some tough times with these screws. So rather than break them off, it's a non-essential piece. In the service, you do not need to worry about that, and I'm not going to worry about that. All right, so let's uh, let's take that little challenge then. I'm going to start with the spool. I have 
a product called Flitz Polish. I want to grab a little um, tray. One of the things that uh, happens with this from time to time is it sprays a lot. Here's your, uh, your spool gear or your pinion gear and here's that uh, little carrier. And uh, let's get started then. So we're going to put a little bit of, I'm just going to squirt it on, shake it up. I'll just read the instructions for you. It says shake well, apply a dry cloth, don't let it dry, buff it with the microfiber cloth and a towel. But we're just going to, we're going to put that on. Okay. All right. A little bit on the uh, toothbrush. We're just going to turn it on and let it do its do its business here. So this is one of these things that says, is it easier or is it harder? And uh, how much effort is required versus using, say, a steel wall and a metal polish? And we'll see. So I don't expect this to do 30 minutes of you watching me do this. But I just want to give you an idea of what kind of results you can expect. And then when we come back and we reassemble, we'll show you it all. It seems to be dissolving everything pretty nicely. There's not a lot of overspray. I was a little bit concerned with that. It really seems to come to the top. Okay, now let's just grab a paper towel and see what happened with that minimal effort there. I think you can, you can pretty much see right away there's quite a difference there. So compared to the other side, so this is the one side, compared to that side, if you turn it over you'll see this where there isn't any uh, corrosion, it's pretty good. We're going to work a little bit more on this. And there's some burrs there. So we're going to work a little bit more and then we'll come back and we'll show you all of that. Again, you don't need to see 30 minutes of me grinding away here, but we'll do our best and we'll uh, show you the results. Okay, so how did we do then? I uh, mixed results, but I think overall nice. Uh, first of all, on the plastic, it does a very nice job. It uh, gets rid of most of the fish scales and accumulated grease and hand oils and things like that. These, these actually restored up very nicely on the plastic sides. On the metal sides, there's no, uh, no solution for heavy corrosion. It did clean it up nice. What sparkle or whatever was uncorroded stayed nicely, uh, it did, did shine up a little bit better than it was, but again, there's no restorative way to do this short of uh, taking it down to bare metal and sending it out to a, um, a machine shop or a motorcycle shop or something to re-chrome these. But otherwise, uh, I would say uh, it's, it's a nice pass there. On the chrome spool, same thing, where you have the loss of the chrome, it's certainly not going to shine that up. It's still a little rough here from the bubbling, but uh, nothing you can do there. And where you had less uh, chrome loss, it, uh, it did well. And of course, if you had a solid piece of chrome that, uh, that wasn't affected by any of that, maybe the handle or the star adjuster, well then you have a nice shiny piece completely. All right, so let's, uh, let's go back and show you one other thing I wanted to do before we reassemble the reel. And this involves that, that hard wash around the bottom. Normally you will see a hard washer on the bottom of a gear sleeve. For example, here's a pen and this hard washer would, well, not that one, but another one that looks similar to that would be there. And that kind of serves two purposes. It, it's a buffer against the main gear. Here's, here's our main gear where we see the, uh, we had some, some rust and corrosion on that. And it uh, also serves to hold the anti-reverse dog in. 
So we don't have one. Uh, that was a casualty of this uh, reel. So I'll show you how to make one. So start with a piece of plastic, a heavy duty piece of plastic. This came off the lid of a coffee can. And we're going to do what we kind of always did back in crafts day. We're going to grab a scissor and, and cut, a, cut a circle anywhere, it doesn't matter where. But cut a diameter of a circle, something like that, until you have a hole. Well, it's not perfect, but with a little bit of work it will be. And uh, work to, to make that kind of uniform so that it can slip over what we have, just like that. All right? And then once you do that, you cut the outer ring. And this will serve as a replacement washer for the, the one that uh, was destroyed through use. Now, the, this is kind of a real, real quick answer, but that, um, that shim there is all you really need. And of course, you can work to get it more circular and um, better, and I will, but I just wanted to show you quickly how that's done. And then when you go over the top with the main gear, Like that, then you have the spacer that you need in the back for the gear to spin and the dog to be held in. So I'll, I'll make a different one, but I did want to show you that quickly before I, I got too far down the, uh, the service path here. So I'm going to pause for a moment, go back and make that different one uh, that's a little bit more precise. And when we come back, we'll assemble the wheel. Okay, so let's uh, let's get started. I tried a little bit better. You can see that that's a better circle on the back here. It will hold that dog in, and it will also fit inside the ring here of the main gear. So we've got our, our shim kind of bush fixed, but uh, done nonetheless. So let's go ahead and reassemble now the, uh, the main gear assembly and the rest of the reel. So we're going to start by taking the bridge that's been cleaned up. Looks, uh, looks nice, uh, a lot better than it did. I'm going to grab our, our brush, and make sure that we get a nice coating of grease onto the main shaft. Then we can put our gear sleeve on, make sure it spins nicely, it does. And then we'll grab that pin that holds that gear sleeve in. Now you didn't see me take this off originally, but you push the pin out. <clears throat> I use a little pick, just find something that's that size of the hole or smaller, and you can generally just push it out with arm strength if you need. You could do a little bit of a tapping with the uh, with a hammer, but generally you don't need much. And then once you put that sleeve back on, we'll grab that main gear, we'll get some good grease on that. That, uh, that toothbrush thing did clean the teeth nicely. When I was doing it, I was checking to make sure that the teeth are solid, that there's no chips or cracks, and uh, or broken teeth that would make it run rough. And uh, in this case, this is a nice machine piece of steel from uh, probably 50 years ago. Again, True Temper took over in 1957. I'm not sure exactly when this reel was made. Let's say 50s, 60s as a kind of a big game reel. And it uh, looks like it's a competitor was the, the Pen uh, 49 series, the Mariner series. All right, push that down. Now you'll notice we have two holes machined into that main gear. And that's why when I started this exercise, I said you should be able to pull that uh, s assembly right out of, the, uh, um, out of the gear. But unfortunately, it was pretty rusted in there. So the WD-40 did its trick. We were able to... Uh, to get that uh, off, polish it up, and now we're going to go put that back in. There's no need to uh, put grease on there. I guess if you want to, we can put a little bit on there just as a anti-rust inhibitor, but there's no moving parts. Those are going to go right into that hole there, and they're going to sit there just like that. All right, the main drag assemblies then. 
we uh, we've cleaned all of them up. These are cork gears or cork washers. They're fairly hard, uh, but what I'm going to do just because you want to maintain flexibility, I'm going to put some Cal's Universal Dry Grease on there. Just rub it in good. If there's any excess, you can wipe it off. Now, I think I previewed that before. We go round, eared round on the metals. They alternate with the cork washers. So the first one in then is a round one. The middle one is called the eared washer. The outer ones are called the keyed washer. The second washer goes in. Sometimes easier said than done, but be careful with them. They are just fabric washers. And you want to take your, your ear washer in next. Do it one more time here. Now, if you got if you got a real big pile of this on there, wipe it off with a cloth uh, because it's only going to get squeezed out. But in this case, uh, it's in pretty good shape. That's the last of your keyed washers. And then you have what's called a cap washer goes on top. And that's the, the gear stack then. And look at that, look at that guy go. Nice. Oops, we did all of that and we forgot one thing, which is why it's convenient that that uh, gear stack just kind of pulls out. What I forgot was the, uh, the dog assembly. So let's go take care of the dog right now. So I'm just going to pull this out. Pull the main gear off, or at least to the point where I can get the, the dog in. The dog rides on the post here, and that little point that point slips into the hole in the shaft there. You can see it come in from behind. Now I can go put this back on and put your drag stack back on. And you want to make sure you're seated into the main gear there. There you go, we're seated in, so everything's fine there. And then on the back, to make your dog work, we've got a spring assembly here. Spring with two hooks. You just need to make sure you line them up. Get the hooks in the groove. And now you'll see that we have an operating assembly for your anti-reverse. Okay, that is your gear stack. Okay, it's time to reassemble it. So let's get uh, going on that then. We've cleaned the inner, inner ring as well as the outer. I'm putting a little bit of grease up top here on that bushing and on the eccentric. Now remember, this is kind of odd in that you put the bridge in on this one before you put the, uh, the yoke and the, and the pinion gear uh, in place. It's kind of the opposite of what you would do with, say, a pen reel. But we just uh, finished doing that, so let's go install the bridge. And there's four bridge screws for that, so let's go grab them. And we noted when we took these out that they're all the same. So there's, uh, there's no, uh, no springs riding on it, as you can see from the yoke assembly, so that doesn't matter too much. So let's get these started. I think I have a cross post one there, we'll see. And again, if this wasn't uh, rusted earlier, you could have just pulled that assembly out, which is pretty neat. You can service your drags without taking the side plate off of the uh, reel in this situation. Right, I'm going to move that up. Kind of a fun little feature. All right, I think that one's probably a cross plate screw. that so I just took two of the wrong screws here not a problem put them away there's thicker ones there you go those are the correct ones put the others back in a parts tray so I don't lose them let's go ahead and make sure
So we tighten these down. And one more. So obviously when you're doing a real repair or a real tune-up, I don't have the time to go back and do a cleaning like this, but if you were restoring a reel, then I think that you found that uh, with some effort, you can uh, make, make it look pretty too. All right, so there's your main gear and the reverse dog, kind of bush fix uh, washer in the back there. So now we can, once we do that, then we can install the upper end. We have a yoke, we have a carrier. The carrier's got rust on it, I think we'll be all right there. So make sure you get good grease onto the yoke. The carrier, if you remember, when we took it off, has it facing outward. And you also have the pinion gear, or spool gear, which slides this way. So the teeth are in where the main gear is. And then we have the two springs, which go over the top. You take that, and then you take your yoke assembly with your spool gear, and you put those over the top of the little carriers there. Press down, and that will free up your two grooves. Your two grooves will accept the jack. And bring that over. Make sure everything's aligned, and you got to make sure you press down on that. Then that little pesky e-clip, you don't want to lose that one. So see if you can get it on with your finger first. Sometimes hand strength is enough. Sometimes it isn't. Make sure that it's in the groove because that's what's going to be holding the yoke on. And it looks like we're good to go. We're dropping our drag washers here. Yep, we're good. All right, so those drag washers can go back in now. There's a thick and a thin. The thick is the one that's the, the last of the key. Next up then, we can put our bell washer and the star. And we're going to leave it at that because I got to make all the attachments. Back over to our case then. Remember we have two replacement ones. I'm going to hide the replacement ones. They're open on the bottom. Let's see if we can't get those in. The screws are going to be a little bit less, so you'll always know where the replacements were. But they're the same, same length, which is important there. Those on each side. And we can take the ones that um, or the thicker ones, we'll put them up top, which is where your stress on this reel is going to be. And again, you can put a drop of oil in the threads. These were pretty hard to get off the last time, so put a drop of oil in each side. That'll uh, help it, or if you like, you can put it right onto the screw itself, like that. And you may need to do what we did before. It shouldn't require a pliers to hold it down, but if it does, you know how to do that now. Okay, so now I'm trying to orient myself with the, the harness. So that'll be the front, so you would want the harness here. So this one's going to go to the that's the one that got stuck in place, so a harness has to be on this side. So the two that I put in place there, we're going to move to the front. And this is where taking pictures helps. I didn't do that, I relied on my memory, and there you go, some rework because of that. 
this one up top over here. And of course, taking pictures with missing parts doesn't help either, but remove that one, remove this one. A slug on this one. And these are the shorter posts. If you weren't paying attention, if you're looking and you're trying to figure out why. You have posts that are different lengths. It's because of these harness lugs here need to even out with the length of the the two. This is one where I think we're going to need the help of that. Uh, to hold it. I've got some oil on there. Again, you just want to stop it so that the post doesn't twist in the jaws. Because if it twists in the jaws, it's going to scar the, the chrome. Maybe this isn't the best example to worry about that, but good practices are good practices. All right. We're going that side. We can take our spool, grease up the shaft of the spool, grease up the front end on this side, spool. a little bit on the bearing in the back here, or the bushing rather. This was chirping a little bit when we started, so I guess I won't be too surprised if it chirps again. Alright, throw our little assembly piece here. And we're going to have to put that lug in, so one of the good things to do then is just kind of get started with the other pieces first. And they have the short screws, just like Penn would have. And I don't like to tighten these all the way down right away because we've got to get that lug in over there. So just get it started to hold it. Same thing up top here, go grab one of the side plate screws for this. Just give it enough that it's steady. Now we can get that lug, two longer screws. And you can start to see how it's coming together. Put a drop of oil there too to make sure it threads easily. Do the same thing on the bottom here. And just as I get it started, I'll put the drop of oil there as well. And now we can finish tightening everything and finish the installation. So overall, a nice reel. It uh, clearly was sitting somewhere for a while, not being used. And uh, it got a lot of rust and the like as a result. But uh, we should be fine. Everything should drive well. We've got a couple of replacement bars here. That's always a good thing. We can tighten up the top here. We should have another screw in the basket there too. Yep, that makes sense. It's always good to have just enough and not too many. And I can't wait to see how we did. So I think uh, 
Cons will agree that uh, his, his methods for cleaning up a corroded reel are good. I've, I've used that before. I haven't had the opportunity to show it on camera. Uh, some folks had some concerns early on when I had mentioned it about uh, it possibly spraying all over the place. Uh, I don't think that toothbrush was spraying. I actually had my one of my screwdrivers laying next to it as I was doing it, if you were noticing. And uh, we didn't have the uh, that get in the way. All right, I just need two more screws because we didn't have those crossbars. So I'm going to grab a container I have here, which has my Ocean City parts in it. Grab a couple of screws. There we go. Alrighty. Just, we're just down to uh, a handle and a test drive. Make sure when you're going to attach your handle that you start to move the drag washer out of the store adjuster down. You don't want to uh, bolt down the handle onto that star adjuster. You won't, uh, you'll stick it. You'll, it'll just be a jam and you won't be able to adjust properly. All right, with any luck, this is somewhere near the top of the handle. There you go, that's how that goes in. And then as soon as you line up to the bottom, you use your set screw down there. To hold everything together. And this is a nice example of an old wheel, how you bring it back. All right, so I think it looks a lot better than when we started. I still like got some grease on my hands and the like, but I like the way that that uh, polish and process worked on the outer plates for sure, and on the chrome plates, which weren't uh, being affected by the, the corrosion. And even on the corrosion, it did clean it up. It didn't take the blistering off, but uh, boy, it looks like this one's ready to go fishing. Look at this. I'm gonna just. We put extra grease in here, so we have to back that off just a little bit. Look at this one. Wow, Kevin, you got a nice reel here. Look at that. I think this one's going fishing again. There you go. So this is the Ocean City. It's the 6051. It's a big game reel. And boy, does this one work nicely. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this. If you did, please like it. If you want to see more, please subscribe. Uh, subscriptions is what keeps my channel vibrant. So please, uh, if you can, help us out with a sub. And uh, if you want to see more of these, that's the best way to do it. And finally, if you have a reel that needs to be repaired and uh, you're not up for repairing it yourself, then uh, 
shoot me a note on the business card that follows, and I'll be happy to provide you with repair information. So, the good news is there's no parts left over. This one was just that example that I had used on that uh, collar washer. And uh, that's the best way to be. What you took off, you put back, and what you put back, you, uh, you've got driving the reel now. So I hope you've enjoyed that. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you for watching.